Hello everyone, welcome, I'm Paco Panda, but in his human version. Today I want to teach you how to make an illustration with inks, but the whole process from the very beginning to the end, from how to put an idea on paper, make the sketch, ink it and scan it. It is one of the most complete virtual classes that I have done until now. As an example for this lesson, I will make one of the illustrations for a project that I am working on which surely, when this video is up on the internet, it will already be complete. The name of the project is The Cat's Kingdom. It is a story that happens in a fictional kingdom where many cats live. So for this illustration, I want to show you a scene of daily life in a street where many cats live. It's a medieval kingdom, so for this, I was seeing many references that will help me define the medieval style. It's not something that I can get out of my imagination from scratch. I almost have references of real scenarios that take me back to the time I want to represent. Can be pictures that taken from the internet or that I myself have taken around my travels. What I am doing right now is making various sketches that help me define a, a scene and a composition. This is essential before going directly to drawing on the paper. These are like little thumbnails that help me get an idea of what I want to capture in my scene. These are general rough sketches to get some ideas for my composition. For the next one I'm taking elements that I liked from the previous thumbnail, so it is important to have them all on the same page so you can compare them, and be deciding what are you liking of each one. I don't have to make them perfect and definitive sketches. My illustration will be done with inks, so I will need the following materials. First of all, Indian inks. I really like the Winsor & Newton brand. It is much better for me than any other brand of inks that I have tried. I will also need a pencil. I really like to use mechanical pencils, but you can use any type of pencil that you are comfortable with. A brush. For inking, I highly recommend using a calligraphy brush. I really like this with natural hair. All thought, if you feel comfortable with a synthetic brush, you can use it and it's cheaper. For this practice, I'm going to give a grayscale finish. I'll do aquarelle, only with black ink. For this, I can use a similar brush with which I'm going to ink, but I really like to use an aqua brush instead, so I avoid of grabbing water directly from a container. It is the brush itself that is already loaded with water and a plastic godet, where I will put different levels of ink and water. For all art materials, I always recommend that you try different ones yourself, and discover which ones are the best for you to work with, since the like for materials varies between artists and artists. And of course, the materials don't define a good artist. Great pieces of art can be made really with any material. Oh sure, and the paper where I'm going to do the ink in cannot be missing. For inks, we cannot use normal paper. I like to use canceled mixed media paper because it is not expensive and works quite well. But you can use other types of paper for this. The important thing is that the paper has higher grammage to 150 grams, because inking on a lower grammage could easily break the paper. As you can see, I had already done two days of this project before. So we are going to start on an empty sheet. I will make a square that delimits my drawing. And now we are really beginning. The advantage of have done these previous rough sketches before starting this is that I can start directly with the general lines. Remember that it is important to define the general figures before starting to detail. First, draw abstract shapes that mark where each element will be. But I'm not yet drawing the details of the characters, nor the faces, the textures of the walls, nor the floor, nope. All this is until I have first defined where each one of them will be on my canvas. For this step, your strokes must be very soft, almost invisible. To the point it is very easy for you to know if you like the position of the characters in the scene, the pose of each character and if each element is in its place. Many times it happened to me that I was detailing instantly, but it turned out that what I was drawing was in the wrong place, and I was not longer one to erase it because I had liked how it turned out. 
So doing this is making us to avoid that problem. It's also important to define the vanishing point in the scene. Vanishing points are important to make our illustration look with a three-dimensional perspective. If you have doubts about how the vanishing points work in drawings, there are millions of videos on YouTube where they explain this perfectly. I especially recommend a video from the BAM animation channel, a video titled Perspective Drawing. The same vanishing point that I did before works for those elements that are even seen very far in the background. Now that we have settled the basic for our scene, I can now start detailing. I use eraser with no shame. It is very useful not only for correcting mistakes, but to be able to perfect the details and correct things. Also, absolutely all artists use the eraser, nobody is perfect. One of my favorite parts on drawing are the expressions of the characters. Personally, I feel this is very therapeutic. It is to give life to some fictional characters that we are creating. We can imagine what they are thinking, what they are doing, how their day has been going, what they will do next. Almost always I start by drawing the hands of the characters before drawing the arms, especially when the characters are doing an action where the use of their hands are important. Because I think that it is important to know what the hands are doing, what they are holding, how they are placed, and after defining that, it is easier then to connect the hands with the torso through the arms. Also at this point I can define details such as what they are holding. Here I really had no idea that this character had a basket with fishes, I just imagined it at the time. The detail of the pose, something that many furries love to draw. I hadn't detailed it until this point. I had only drawn the amorphous mass of where the pose was placed, but it's not until I'm defining the sketch that I can draw the pins and the toes. This other character is a lady cat who is buying in the market. She's one of the main focal points in my scene, the first thing that I, I want the viewer to see. So I'm detailing her a little more than the rest of the characters. Here is a cart, which belongs to the market vendor. I personally consider it hard to draw non-organic objects, but I don't worry much about making it look so technical. I think it is part of the drawing style that even these kind of elements look a little more organic than they should, so I don't worry as much if it looks a little crooked. Here I'm placing this character over the background sketch I had already drawn. Honestly, it doesn't matter to put over other elements, because it is still a sketch and I myself decide what the priorities are in my scene. Then with the eraser I will be able to define what goes in front of what and what is not going to be visible anymore. Hands are kind of difficult to draw, I rarely draw them at my first try. I don't consider myself good at drawing hands, but in my opinion, as long as you understand what is happening with characters' hands and that we don't draw the thumb in the wrong position, all good. We always have to prioritize what is beneficial for our scene. We can always be so technical in everything we draw. Knowledge is good, of course, but we can't always apply everything. We are not always going to draw with correct proportions or with total perfection. In fact, looking for perfection in a drawing can be a big problem, because it is something that doesn't exist. We can idealize our work. What we should expect on our art pieces is to show and express ourselves. Since we finally have our finished sketch, now we can go to the main step, inking. I'm going to ink directly with a brush. It's important that the tip of the brush is sharp. And before going directly to inking on the drawing, it's good to make some test strokes on a separate paper, to remove the first excess ink that we can grab, and to practice our pulse a little bit. Now that I'm ready, I proceed to inking. I'm not sure what to recommend to be ink first. I usually ink from left to right since I'm right handed and I don't want to be passing my hand over fresh ink and smear everything. But I also start with what I think is more comfortable to ink first. Today I have decided to start with the characters in foreground from the left. Oh, 
Also, personally, this is what I consider the most fun to draw and ink, the characters and their faces. It inspires me to see the characters finish to continue with the scene and create a dignified environment around them. With the ink, I can even detail things that I had not detailed in the sketch, such as the texture of this cat's basket. We can also ink with a preloaded fountain pen. It is much easier than inking with the brush. I really like to ink with a brush because with the same brush stroke, I can make very thick and then thin on the same stroke. I feel that with the brush, we show a lot of personality on our stroke, like our own signature. But inking with a fountain pen is definitely much easier, and there are different numbers of tips available, from very thin to very thick. Also, the ink from the from a fountain pen dries much faster than this one, and you don't you don't have to be recharging ink in the inkwell every minute, and the result is much cleaner. But it is not something I'm looking for this particular project. I want this illustration to feel like obviously something done totally in traditional. It is up to each artist how they will work in each of their pieces, and I always recommend to experiment with various techniques, and not only stay with your favorite, but continue exploring. I can feel with pure black this element that I want to be noticed in the scene. Remember this lady cat is the main focal point, so I'm not afraid to detail her a lot, to mark her elements more than others. Something that I wouldn't do in more distant details, because the more distant elements are things that I only want the viewer to know that they exist, but that they don't take as much importance. Remember you don't have to detail absolutely everything. These elements that are far away in the background shouldn't be fully defined. The lines can be irregular, incomplete and scribbled. The farther the elements are, the more detail they lose. Also, it works very well to make them very, very thin lines, the thinnest in all the scene. So, to summarize this very well, close and important elements is recommendable to detail them and give them a much thicker and more defined strokes. Elements that are not important to the scene, but we add them because they are necessary, so that the viewer know that they exist, but they are not as detailed and the further they are from the foreground, a thinner line and more loss of details is recommended. For non-organic elements, such as the wheel, it is difficult to ink it with a brush, you need very good precision in the hand for this, but I'm doing it with the brush anyway. I don't care so much if my line is not precise because, like I said before, I don't care that the wheel looks a, a little crooked. It's part of the personality of the style that it doesn't look so technically correct, and I can even cover up my mistakes inking the shadows with pure black. Plus that gives it a lot of shape. The characters in the background are not as detailed as those in the foreground, but they still have a bit more detail than those in the very far background, which are practically scribbled lines. It doesn't matter if we rotate our canvas, it's not cheating. We must always act to benefit of our illustration, and if some lines in a certain position are easier for us to make them, it is better to rotate our sketchbook as long as they get well done. I find it much more comfortable to do these thin and fast strokes for the whisker of cats vertically. And finally, I ink the structures, which is my own decision to ink them with a brush. Usually artists ink them with a fountain pen or a marker. But for the style that I want to give to my illustration, the brush gives it a complete organic feel. So for this particular project, I'm not caring so much if some lines that should be straight don't remain completely straight. That also gives the scene a little bit of personality. I'm giving some extra details here and there, and when I have decided that I am done, I wash my brush so it doesn't get like a rock. If I don't wash it at the moment I stop using it, I may not be able to give it a second use. Now that I have everything inked, I'm going to erase the entire sketch I made in pencil, but it's important to know that I had to wait a few minutes for the ink to be completely dry, 
If I decided to erase immediately I'm done inking, it's very likely to sweep up the ink and make a mess. You have to be very patient and wait for this to be completely dry before erasing. And do it very carefully so as not to mistreat the sheet. That's why I hold the sheet with my hand, very carefully, to prevent it from wrinkling it. Now I take my godet which as you can see is already very used. But since I have only used it with the same black Indian ink, I have not washed it. If I were to use color watercolors and I had my godet in this state, I would definitely have to wash it first. And I will load some ink on my aqua brush, which already has water inside. I'm going to put at least three different levels of ink combined with water. I press the brush a little to spread water over the first slot and I make a try on my paper to check the shade of grey. Then I take some ink from the sample and dissolve it in the next slot. So this way I have a much lower shade of ink than the previous one. And I do the same with the next one. So I'm going to repeat the same step until I leave it almost invisible shade of grey. It is not going to be that invisible when we already applied it in our illustration. I always put them in order to know which is the darkest and which is the lightest, so it's hard this way to get confused. I always start by inking from the lightest to the darkest tones, as our brush at the time is very lightly charged with ink. Here it seems like I'm only filling this part with water, but there is a difference between what I'm inking and what is left in blank. Here I'm inking the sky with the lightest shade that my scene will include leaving the blank space for the clouds. Now I'm defining what will be inked with the mid-tones. These characters are overshadowed of the buildings, so right now I define the general lighting of the scene on them, without taking importance for the moment about the shape and texture. I'm leaving a white edge on the right perimeter, which is where I think some rays of light are touching them. So for now I'm pretty much filling in all the characters with a base shade. The lady and the salesman are two key characters in my composition. So they will have a different lighting. I want to define a contrast in the two of them. And probably they get a direct ray of sunlight, which will separate them from the rest of the scene. I think the building in the background should be in the same tone as the secondary characters, so that neither them nor the buildings stand out on the scene so much. For a large area where I have to fill, it is important to put a lot of water, so this way we get more solids, avoiding some cracks of water. Which indeed don't look that bad, sometimes those cracks of water makes them look traditional. I've decided that I do want to separate the secondary characters from the background. So using a contrastingly darker shade, I'll make the front face of the building separate them from the rest. And again I'm turning my canvas, but this time upside down. This time to not put my hand over the fresh ink, to avoid making a mess. I take advantage that I have this shade of ink loaded in my brush, to create the shadows of the floor that the characters are making. And here I can start making a bit of texture, to make it look more interesting. The character of the lady cat has black marks on her fur. Now it may be time to define them. Also, it's also time to define that the color of her clothes has different shades. This is not only makes it look more interesting, but by adding more details it highlights her from the rest. And that is what I'm looking for, because among so many varied elements that this scene has, there had to be main focuses that I want the viewer to notice first. In this case, it's her. Also the little kitty with the fish basket I wanted to stand out a little more from the rest, so I'm turning him in a main character. I imagine he's a black cat, so I will add a darker tone only in his fur, but respecting the lighting on it. I also add texture to elements such as the basket and his pants, which visually generates texture through light. So it is important to consider where the lights come from, in order to define the texture of any element, no light, no texture. As the same as light defines color, but in this case we are seeing everything in grayscale. And since we decided that the little kitty is now part of the main characters too, we have to separate him from the rest of the characters, creating a contrast between him and the cat that is behind him, and also that creates depth on the scene. In the same way I slightly darken the character next to him, also to contrast him and generate depth between one character and another. 
to know that they are in different planes, even when the distance between them is very short. The seller also has unique fur patterns, and I take the opportunity to create texture in his clothes. I'm going to separate the two main characters, creating a contrast between the background that surrounds them from the rest. As if almost everything was in shadow, but only they are illuminated by a ray of sunlight that peeks out between some of the buildings in the village. I don't mind that all these minor elements lose detail, because they are not really important in my composition, and if I detailed each one of them, I'd end up making a piece full of many elements, and it would look more like viewing a Where's Waldo page than an illustration for a story. I also want to define some elements that have different color shades, that even though it is in grayscale, essential on painting is to respect the values to create a depth perception. It applies the same with color or with grayscales. I decided at the moment to add some bricks texture to this wall, so that way it doesn't look like a solid wall. It gives a little more personality to that area, and it's something that I haven't defined from the beginning. Those are things that happen on the way of this adventure of creating an art piece, improvising and having fun doing it. Almost the entire wall behind will be in shadow, but I like to leave some blank spaces so the texture of the stone can be shown. To be able to give a second pass to elements where I had already inked before, first I must be sure that part has already dried, otherwise I'll only make the ink expand, achieving unwanted results. I like to give new passes to areas that I had already inked, because they darken more and some shadows remain, achieving new levels of shades that I hadn't put in my godet. And from here I only begin to give details that I consider complementary. From now on I can only stop until I decide to stop myself, because I could continue giving details infinitely and never finish. It's difficult indeed when we say an illustration is finished, we can only decide that ourselves. Something I like to do is going away the illustration for several minutes, even hours, or even the next day, when we are back to see if there's anything else that we can improve, because it's kind of doing reset to our eyes and we can see it with another perspective. And that's when we decide to add more details or change things that can be changed, such as highlighting some objects, improving some ways of highlighting characters, giving better shade to areas that maybe I had forgotten to shade, or also is when we decide our piece was done. When I'm sure I'm done, I wash my brush really well so it doesn't dry out, and I proceed to sign. The signature is very important, it's our personal human stamp with which we say that this was a piece made by a living being, and not by an artificial intelligence. I was adding a margin, so each illustration is exactly the same size as the other. I did this with a roller and a marker, to maintain that uniformity. But at any other separated illustration out of this project, I could have left this illustration without any type of framework. And our illustration is ready, but I wouldn't like to end this class here, because I guess we also want to show our work to the world, so it is time to digitize it. We need to transfer it to our computer. For this we will need a scanner, we don't need an overly professional scanner, any modern home scanner works perfectly. My problem with this format is that it doesn't fit completely in the standard frame, my canvas is much larger. So the solution is to scan it in two parts, first the top. Oh, also it is important to mention, you should wait until the drawing is completely dry, otherwise we will smear our drawing on the scanner glass, we definitely don't want that. Now we scan the second part, so we'll have two files on our computer.
There's a very easy way to merge both files on Photoshop. And I apologize that I have Photoshop in Spanish, but it's in File, Automate, and Photo Merge. Then we select the two files we scan, and we will make Photoshop do this magic for us. And that's it, it's ready! We just crop it correctly and we have our illustration ready to be shared on the internet and let the world see our creation. I hope you that this video was very useful to you. You know that you can write me in the comments or on any of my social networks if you have any questions. I would also like you to show me your own illustration that you did after watching this quick course. I would love to see them and also provide you with feedback. See you very soon! This panda loves you!